Disclaimer, these videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in a video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Gellivelt, part of the First Battle of Ypres, this battle took place near Ypres in Belgian Flanders on the Western Front, pitting the British Expeditionary Forces against the German Empire on October 28th through October 31st, 1914. The failed attack by the German Fourth Army had become stranded by the evening on October 27th. General Falkenhayn was determined to renew the attack with extra vigor, but instead of just throwing his men forward, he ordered the Fourth and Sixth German Armies to conduct a holding attack. As the Fourth and Sixth Army held off the British, French, and Belgians, Falkenhayn ordered General Max von Fabek to assume command of Army Group Fabek from the remains of two corps and two divisions. In a desperate move, Army Group Fabek pushed past the holding attack of the German 4th and 6th Army and pushed towards Popring. Falkenhayn believed this was necessary and pushed so hard for this to work that he rationed artillery ammunition to other units south of the fighting and used it for the 250 heavy artillery pieces that were supporting Army Group Fabek. The town of Gellivolt was a small village consisting of 1,000 people. Unfortunately for the villagers, it held value on the men in the Ipper Road. The Germans determined this would be the quickest and most direct route to take as the forests around the village were too dense for fast movement. The British realized this and determined they would attempt to hold the AGF there. Army Group Fabek, known as the AGF, proceeded northwest towards Gellivolt and Messines. On October 29th, the AGF thrust against the British Expeditionary Force's 1st Corps on a Menin Road. Blanketed and concealed in a thick fog, the AGF attacked at dawn, and by nightfall the attack had secured the AGF, Gellivolt Crossroads, and about 600 British prisoners. The victory was temporary, however, as the French forces were able to recapture Bigachut and Cordicure Cabaret to the north and helped slow the push by the AGF and prevented them from reaching Ypres itself except for being in range of their artillery. By October 30th, the German attacks were stopped by the British and the British recaptured Zandvoort, Hollebeck, and Hollebeck Chateau. Using Zandvoort as a rallying point, the British and French reinforcements were able to hold the Germans until October 31st. On October 31st, the Germans launched a final desperate attack, but in the end were unsuccessful thanks to the British 2nd Worcestershire, not the sauce, who were able to stop the German assault. This battle is just a part of what is called the First Battle of Ypres. Casualty lists were not prepared for this smaller portion of the battle, but it can be said that for the overall First Battle of Ypres that took place between October 19th and November 22nd, 1914, that the Germans suffered more than 130,000 men killed, wounded, captured, and missing. Meanwhile, the British suffered more than 58,155, French suffered between 50 and 85,000, and the Belgians suffered more than 21,000 men killed, wounded, or captured, or missing. It was a brutal cost, all for no advantage for anyone in the end. We'll see you next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.